Just fucking do it. Subscribe now. And I'm, I'm a flipping motherfucker. If you're flippable, I'll flip you. I like to take the zealot and just move it over here to QLA. From God to QLA. And when it happens, it's a thing of fucking beauty. His biggest challenge is to replace himself because he sells, he's a seller. And he, he, he has, but it, it ain't been easy. Because when you see the numbers drop the first 30 days, because you're not selling, and then you see him drop another for the next 30 days, you start to second guess, well, what the fuck, we're going on? I'm going to go broke in the meantime. But he didn't, and he's, um, he's put together a formidable team, and he's just he's cranking. I mean, he, he just he doesn't want to sleep. It's like I didn't want to sleep because I wasn't doing deals. I didn't want to go home. Not because I didn't love my family. Because working at home wasn't, uh, whatever, that didn't, gener uh, that, that didn't click with me. And um, so I used to sleep in the office. But you listen to Elon, who was famous for sleeping on the floor of the fucking factory, and uh, Steve and uh, Branson and uh, Gates and all these guys, we all slept at the office. And... Um, Questions about uh, Thomas. And he's Canadian. I mean, in the uh, 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 run on the banks, the, the uh, uh, depression of 1803, the bank run of 1819, uh, the bank run of 1863 during the Civil War, uh, during uh, the First World War, uh, during the Depression, not one Canadian bank ever failed. In the history of banking, since Moses, not one fucking Canadian bank has ever, ever even come close to failure. How is that possible? And they don't let those cousins across the border, us, the Americans, sway them. But it's, it's like stealing candy from a baby and shooting fish in a barrel and knocking down old cripples crossing the street. They love the model. It transcends love. They lust after it. Because they we, and we're going to show you, we de-risk it, we delever it enough to make it almost perfect for them. He, there's no way humanly possible, and you put whatever multiple you want to put on six million. You put on, and he's in the high end. I mean, you put on whatever multiple from scratch. None of his money, and he's just a kid. He's Chinese on top of it. Be better if he was black Chinese, but it'd be a better story. In five years from now, he's going to be a black Chinaman. We're, we're going to blacken his face, and maybe the, the, the people won't get mad at me for doing that. We'll blacken his face up. And I say what people don't dare to think. Doesn't mean they're not thinking it. What are the takeaways from Thomas, other than he's an aggressive little guy? Yeah, yes, sir. This is a question. Um, his first goal is $50 million in revenue for the first year and two fifty dollars for the second. Um, how does he come up with those numbers? He pulls them out of his ass. Fair enough. That's exactly where he came up with them. I, I helped him a little with those numbers, but all your numbers are too low. They're too low. They're just categorically, they're too low. Now, I won't say like some of the guys just multiply times 10 because it depends where you are with the industry, blah, 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 blah. But they're just too low. Because you're afraid of failing. You've been taught, make small goals incremental that you can make so you don't are disappointed with the intermittent failures, right? Well, that's wrong. You want big fucking bodacious goals. Like Obama, I'm going to be the first black president. Or he's smoking crack as a fucking, you know, 19, 20-year-old kid. 
Even big goals. I mean, I already told you the first, some of the, not just the you, but virtually everybody comes through here. So the goals are just, they're pathetic, but they're a, they're a, uh, a product of your economic and uh, social milieu. They're a product of where you came from. They're a product of how you were raised. They were a product of, uh, obviously, back to your parents. That's why your goals are so fucking low. Because you, don't, you didn't do what you, your parents, even if your parents thought that they were training you right, they weren't. You didn't do what the, your parents, they told you to do. You, you saw what your parents were doing. If your mother scrubbed toilets and your dad was a cab driver and he said you're going to be a multimillionaire, what are you smoking, Pop? Give me some of that shit. But your, the parent, the, the mama that was scrubbing the toilets and the dad that was driving the cab didn't even say that to you. Questions about Thomas? Questions or comments, whatever. You uh, gonna like fall down again? Say again? We'll fall down again. We're gonna get on film this time when you fall down. I just down. might. I just might. This guy collapsed into the ground. And, but anyway, go ahead. It's the cheap desks, Mr. Yeah, is that what it is? Okay. <laughs> uh, I like what he said. He said, um, "I have brand name board members. They're all crazy like me, and none of them ask me how much." Correct. If they, have, I, I'll bet you a million dollars to a penny. At least half of you are going to be asked by the potential board member what's in it for me. At least half. I'm being generous with a half. Why? Because you're a weak cunt. And they think they're going to bully you around. And in most cases, they're right. They're, you're a weak cunt. Now, I eat kids like that for breakfast. He's not the sweat from, you know, down the inside of my leg the last time I had sex with Sally. But look what he's done. Now, hence, you should be able to, or are you less than the dribble down the inside of my leg? Are you more equal to or more than? Josh Kim said it a couple years ago. 95% of all the things I worried about never happened. Because the questions you ask are your insecurities, your lack of self-confidence. Not because you haven't done it before. I can understand that. The first time you get up on the golf course, I don't play anymore, I used to be a good player. If you break 100 the first time you're on the golf course, you're one in 10 million guys. Guys don't break 100 the first time they're on the golf course. One in 10 million. And you're playing with Tiger Woods, back in the day, Arnold Palmer, and Jack Nicklaus, and there's you. With your, your knee... But you still got to take a swing. You still got, you know, the, uh, you still got to take a swing. You, as long as you're on the pitch in the batter's box and you're swinging that bat, eventually you're going to hit it. And he, and he, I mean, the reason why we showed it today, a year later, almost to the day. Now, when we filmed him a year ago, I didn't know that, did I? I had an inkling, because I, just like I can smell death, I can smell talent. And in that room, there was Jason Nagy, Dan Locke, amongst a couple others. After, do, after doing this for almost 28 years, 27 and a half years, you, you, know, you, can, you know, you can tell bullshit. You can pretty much decipher. Sometimes, you know, I'm 5%, 10% wrong. But um, just as I knew 
Josh, and just as I knew some of the other kids. It's like a, 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 a baseball a scout, a guy that I went to school with, uh, played for the Angels, and then he became a scout for the Angels. And uh, my age, a great athlete. And uh, he says, you know, after 20, 25, 30 years, Dan, you, you just know, you know, how he chooses. In, in those days, they still chewed all tobacco. Or he puts the wad of shit, you know, in his mouth. No one is going to get cancer from it. Okay? Uh, you know, how he hits the dirt off his cleats, you know, how they do with the batters. You just, you know, you just know. Then you see him take a, you only need two or three, you see him two or three swings at the ball. Whether he connects or not, and you know, I know. Well, I, that's, I'm, I'm past that. I'm, I'm better than that now. I, you know, I'm better at smelling death. I'm better at smelling death because I can, uh, I can read, see the fear in their eyes. And, uh, but you know what he's accomplished now. You know what he heard he sounded like 30 days out of the seminar. He, you know, and he, he's done terrific. He's done terrific. We've had some speed bumps that he thought was Mount Everest, but, uh, they weren't. But he believes. I mean, he sounds like it. He sounds like a religious zealot. If he was pounding with a Bible and a cross like this, went, you know, just different words in his mouth. And for those of you that can take that energy or that focus for whatever it is and put it over into QLA, <clears throat> you'll do terrific. I was a zealot for success. I wanted to taste success. Something, because I wasn't successful athletically. I was a, I, I, you can't even call me an athlete of any form or fashion. And my dad was a world-class athlete. I just, I had to be good at something. This, in hindsight, I'm saying that. I didn't, when I was 18, 19, 25, I didn't know any of this shit. But I, I just knew, I had to be good at something. Fuck! And to my dad's credit, he never, ever once mentioned my athletic failures. Never! I walk off the field. But he didn't say it was okay. You know how in the commercials, they put their arm around it? They never said that. He says, get in the fucking car. <laughs> That's all he had to say. That was like, oh, a knife in me. Oh, oh. Jesus Christ. And when, when, I, when I talked to uh, my buddies that I went to high school with, they don't remember me being as poor athlete as I was. You're exaggerating. And I remind, remind him of a couple of games. Um, I remember that. I remember when you dropped the ball. Yeah, um, I guess you're right. Let's talk about something else. Yeah. Okay, any questions? Doing something dramatic every day is really important. Every day, not weekly. Every day. Uh, you saw the, already the weekly updates that he does. Those are... Dynamite. Those are dynamite. Uh, nobody's left the board. He's, he's ch made a few changes, exchanges, where he's uh, asked some people to leave. Um, he just recently, in the last, that was a year ago, he just recently, maybe three or four months ago, uh, maybe five, six months ago, he, he incorporated, yada, yada, uh, gave out the shares. Uh, again, the board members, nobody asked them uh, uh, during the interviewing process. Uh, the directors are on their own nickel, their own dime, and they travel. Um, to the best of my knowledge, all of his uh, directors are in either, uh, well, they're in North America. They're in the United States or uh, in um, Canada. Uh, and, ca and Canada uh, is, uh, any, any, the last three or four deals he's done has been during Corona. And the, um, the Canadian banks have slowed down in putting money out, but they haven't stopped. They haven't stopped. And when you use the nomenclature, the words, you know, we will always be bringing you deals that stand on their own feet vis-a-vis -vis free cash flow covering debt service by some multiple. When you say those words, those are magic words. But then bring them deals when that's true. Don't be bringing them some half-assed crap. 
Um, and then you, you build these uh, relationships with these bankers uh, for a lifetime, and you'll, you'll never want for money. And they tease me, but during the great, not this great financial debacle, but on a previous one, when oil went from $41 a barrel to $6 a barrel, we had no shortage of money. None. Zero. We got money from not everybody and their, and their brother, but almost everybody and their brother. And so we were you know, able to fund our, our growth and all those acquisitions we made back in the day. Um, but, I mean, it's, it's not probable because there's too many variables, but it's, it's certainly very possible to do this. And it's now, even though it may sound uh, like it, it doesn't make sense, it's easier now during the corona era. It's just easier. Because most of the, one, the sellers are afraid. Two, the weak cunts that are weaker than you aren't going out in the hunt. Because they've already decided they're going to wait till Corona's over. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you. you know, if I wrote the script, I couldn't have written it any better. Because unfortunately, even though fear is false, expectations appearing real, Fear is real. I mean, it can be really real. And we've all been afraid of something. And, you know, you hear that, well, oh, man, it's full of shit. You know, this is pretty fucking real to me right now. Um, but it is, you know, we don't, we don't, uh, you, I used to say you can't die from fear, but that's wrong. I now know you can die from fear. But I mean, uh, fear doesn't come up and put a bullet in you. you know? And uh, anxiety is a self-induced thing. We make ourselves anxious. We make ourselves anxious. And um, when you learn the, the trick to become fearless, your world is your oyster. You know, your world is your oyster. Um, a lot of people, I'm told, uh, use drugs to escape that fear of living, that fear of life. I miss that. But uh, I know kids do it, and I know that I know guys my age that have kids that have done it. But we don't need that. We don't need that. I mean, um, but I've been saying since uh, when I was in my teens, I'm high on life. I don't know what that meant when I was saying in my teens, but I I'm high on life. I mean, uh, but I've always looked at the positive. It's not you know what happened to me. It's how I interpreted it. And that was one of my dad's pearls, words of wisdom. And God, God knows, I, I believed him. I believed him. Anything else uh, about Thomas? Yes, sir. A question. Pardon? This is a black question. Uh, this is a black question. <laughs> uh, should, should, should we uh, not show the YouTubers? I mean, you know, okay, go ahead. Um, in the QLA model, it says to focus on kissing a lot of frogs and getting a lot of money. I mean, uh, getting the money, right? And so no, the QLA model for you is to find deals and money. 95% of your time and effort, once you put the board together, the accounts a little bit, is 95% is focused on deals and money. That's it. Whether you're black, yellow, or blue, no matter where you are in the world, 95%. And as he alluded to, he says, finding somebody to, uh, and he has now exited day-to-day -day management, uh, but he, we had to get two people to do his job. I mean, um, we had a CFO many, many years ago that died. We had to have four people we had to bring in the company to do what Charlie did. Four. Four. Um, so the rest of your question is what? You answered it. Pardon? You answered it already. Because I was going to ask, like, do we go over, like, how to transition from running Oh, well, no, don't worry about that. I mean, let's, 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 let's do a deal first. The, uh, we're, not, we're not transitioning anything. All, you know, we, we, we get your dick wet first, one time. Then you worry about all the rest. But what, what will help you transition in the transition process are the experience that you've got on the board. All these guys and gals know how hard it is. All these ga ga guys and gals aren't doing it because it's hard. And the reason you've been able to gather them together is because of your leadership. 
but they know how to do it. The CFO and all these guys know. Uh, Sally said uh, years ago we were working on a deal for a, a bank, and Sally said, if, if you've got to explain to the CFO what his job description is, you hired the wrong person. You do. I mean, you did. If you have to uh, describe to, to the sales manager, the guy in charge of marketing sales, what his job is, you hired the wrong person. Same with chairman, same with CEO. These guys and gals have been doing this 25, 30 years, in some cases before you were born. And they, 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 the, the old guy, well, to me they're young, but to you they'll be old. These old people have some great fucking ideas, I mean, that they weren't allowed to do when they were at uh, World Dutch Shell. They weren't allowed to do it when they were at Cardinal Health. They weren't allowed, it's a good idea, but whatever, those big infrastructures didn't allow them to do it. And now they've got an opportunity to expand under your leadership. And the operative word is leadership. Again, the board's there to govern. You're there to lead. And uh, corporate governance is not easy now. Well, it was never been easy. But, I mean, the, the people are so worried about stepping on somebody's toes. Uh, I'm not worried about that. You know, uh, I would rather ask for forgiveness than permission. As long as it's legal. As long as it's legal. But I, I, I'm not concerned about anything else. As I told you a couple of days ago, most of the kids, my, my mentees that get in trouble, get in trouble for not paying taxes. Because they go to a seminar in Cyprus where they tell you you don't have to pay taxes anymore. Uh, if you open up a county, that's all bullshit. If you're a U.S. citizen, you have to pay taxes on any income worldwide. Back in the 90s, about... 20 or 30 percent of my kids went to Cyprus because they were paying 18, 19 percent on uh, uh, their accounts. On a Monday morning, uh, the uh, Sally wakes me up and said, uh, "Cyprus devalued their money 60 percent, so everybody lost 60 percent of the money. Hundreds of billions." And if you went back, just like going back to look at the 1918 pandemic, if you go back through history, anybody that's ever paid close to 20% went bust. Going back four or 5,000 years, they were paying 15, 20%. This is the lowest interest rates in 5,000 years. And then they all blame me for not kicking them harder to keep their money out of Cyprus. No matter what happens, when it goes wrong, it's only one person's fault. And he's sitting up here with a pot belly right now. That's it. I already know that. That used to bother me 25 years ago. It doesn't bother me now. You know, Sally calls me rhino skin. You know, I got the skin like a rhino, you know. And when I used to come here in the 80s and 90s, I'd say, call me anything. You can't hurt my feelings. Just give me the fucking money. That was part of my pitch. Call me anything. You can't hurt my feelings. You can give me the fucking money. Some people called me, my nickname was, give me the fucking money. Have you seen give me the fucking money yet? Well, he'll be around. Don't worry. He doesn't, he, he doesn't care who it is. He'll take money from anybody. Which is true, I would. And I did. And I still do. Just give me the fucking money. You should be so lucky as being the black, give me the fucking money. Or the Chinese or the whatever, give me the fucking money. Money rules. Money talks and bullshit walks. And all of you are old enough to realize, I already said life's not fair. That's not even germane to anything. But cash is king. There's a reason why a lot of us are 100% cash. There's a, there's a reason the big motherfucking big tsunami, not this chicken shit corona rona tsunami, the big motherfucker's coming. The big motherfucker's coming. And that's what I thought was going to come this last, but it didn't. We got a kind of a junior in Corona. When the system goes down, I'm the only one that read that 
The Bank of England said they came a cunt's hair away from going bankrupt in the UK in March. I'm the only, well, am I the only one that can read? Because they don't want to send panic. You listen, YouTube, you miserable cunts. For those of you in the UK, you almost went bankrupt, you dipshits. But you don't want, just like Nicholson said, you can't stand the truth. You can't. You don't want to hear the truth. You want to be Pollyanna. Like in the great scene at the end of Gone with the Wind, which they are now taking off the air because of the black Bambi in the Gone with the Wind, who was the first black person to win an Academy Award in 1939. They're taking the fucking movie off the air. Anyway, the final scene, the uh, rich girl in Atlanta is burned to the ground, and she's looking in the flames. She says, oh, I can't wait until April, the springtime, and the flowers. Flames, the fucking boards are falling all around her. What are you, now, what's wrong with you people? Jesus Christ. But it's good for us. It's good for us. I told you, I want to float up on blood, a pool of blood of all the fucking morons. I'm just going to float to financial heaven on a pool of blood, and I can just hear the, hear the people gurgling, choking around me. Get off me, asshole. Blah, 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 and just float all the way up. That's what I dream about. Fuck them. Pull up the gangplank. I'm on board. We're on board. And if you utilize the way you're been, being taught, the steps, you'll have no problem. Some of you will get super, super rich. Some of you will only get rich. But all of you will be better off than when you walked in the fucking door here. Which isn't saying too much, I might add. A couple of you got a couple of Bob, but... Because it works. It works if you're a gal, black, yellow, purple. It doesn't matter. It works. On that happy note, YouTube, go suck my ass.